St. John the Philosopher here. One of my guilty pleasures of late is the Amazon Prime superhero series, The Boys. Now I say guilty pleasure because it's really, really vulgar. I generally try to limit the amount of gratuitous violence and sexuality in my entertainment, and The Boys pretty much uses my entire weekly quota. Based on the comic book series of the same name, which is pretty much why I tried this show in the first place, it's basically built on the question, what if superheroes were sociopathic a-holes? In many ways, it's the spiritual successor to the widely acclaimed 1986 Watchmen comic miniseries, which was adapted into a movie back in 2009. Watchmen pretty much pioneered what many today would call deconstructionist superhero storytelling, in which many of the common tropes and ideas behind typical superhero stories are turned on their head as a means of exploring those ideas from a different angle. The heroes veered towards the morally gray, if not the downright dark, with the cast that included a traumatized misanthrope, a sociopathic billionaire, and a man so far removed from humanity that he felt more at home on Mars. All pseudo analogs of existing characters from the DC Comics pantheon. As such a unique and pivotal work, many consider it a masterpiece of the genre. While there have been many copycat stories since, some even using the real heroes as opposed to knockoffs, most of them seemed much more concerned with the subversions themselves rather than making them mean something. The makers of The Boys, however, seem to know what they're doing. In this world, superheroes are more like the worst kind of public figures imaginable, combining the nastiest traits of the music industry, Hollywood, and Washington DC. Instead of freelance or even government heroes like we've seen in other stories, the soups are corporate properties, highly produced, closely managed PR packages. Every aspect of their appearance is scripted and focus group tested. Even their super heroics are virtually staged. And it's all intended to mask the reality of their self-indulgent and often murderous misdeeds in order to keep the cash rolling. The most perfect example of all this is the character Homelander, who is that world's version of Superman, a flying, indestructible, laser-eyed demigod. The subversion is that he's an absolute psycho. He wasn't raised by the Kents with good old-fashioned Midwest values. That's entirely a put-on for the cameras. The Boys is definitely written with the social media obsessed world of today in mind, and it really works, even in spite of the occasional dip into leftist narrative. We're currently seven episodes into season two, and something interesting occurred to me. I'm not sure if it's a theme that was intended as subtext to the comic, but it's shown clear as day in my mind as I was watching. Whether we're talking about great physical or technological prowess, super strength, telepathy, flight, or teleportation, the real power that delights us isn't the one that makes them super, it's the one that makes them heroes, the desire to use their powers for good. The combined power of the Avengers is enough to topple governments if they wanted to. And what nation could stand against Superman taking over the entire world? But while they possess the ability to fulfill all those evil little fantasies that live in the deepest recesses of all our hearts, they refrain and instead live lives of sacrifice and service. If we were honest, most of us don't even think that way. Ask anyone that favorite of nerdy questions, what superpower would you get if you could have just one? And the reasoning will always come down to something self-focused. I want to be indestructible so no one can mess with me. I want to be able to read minds so I can always come out a winner. I want to be able to fly so I can avoid traffic. Oh, oh okay, I can forgive that one. What the superheroes in our favorite stories do with their powers is rarely about make, making themselves feel good or comfortable. Instead, they defend the weak, protect the innocent, and bring justice to those who threaten either. They give up personal peace of mind so that the rest of us can have a little. It's wonderful, aspirational stuff, and that's why we eat it right up. We want to be good enough people inside to believe we'd be more Superman than Homelander. And more than that, we want the people in whom we entrust actual real world power to be that good as well. Whether it's lending your kid the keys to the car or voting for the person that's going to carry around the keys to the nation's nuclear stockpile, we want to know that the person wielding that power will do so without dangerous self-indulgences getting in the way. We want the men and women that wield the power of the government gun to conduct themselves honorably. We want those who make our laws to do so in accordance with all that's good and just. Sadly, that's not always the case in the real world. In fact, I don't think it's that way with politicians much at all. So what larger expression of this deep desire in us can there be than someone wielding ultimate power 
and doing so from a place of ultimate good. Well, that's why they call it fantasy. Tell me what you think of this video. What do you think about the real super power of goodness? Also, what power would you choose and why? Discuss in the comments. In the meantime, be sure to like, subscribe, and share for more videos on religion, culture, and politics. That's all for today. Goodbye, God bless, and we'll see you in another video.